All right, before we dig in, I need you to watch this clip from Wim Hof's official YouTube channel. Hi guys, there was my squatting place. Wim is about to tell us his origin story, but we need to fast forward a little bit to get to the important part. <laughs> After Wim gets in the water and does some breathing exercises, he explains what he's just done. She was worried. But this I did every day. It was an exercise, a deep exercise. So before it was hyperventilating like what I did now. And then I felt charged. And the last one, fully out, fully in, and then going down. And that's what I did every day. An amazing stilling exercise for the mind, pure meditation. I did that every day since 44 years ago up till now and it's still there it's an amazing power what you just watched was a bombshell a smoking gun and if you're not deeply entrenched in the physiology of breath work you could have missed it wim hof just gave explicit instructions for blacking out in the water and drowning in the video he explains that this is his technique to achieve amazing health benefits but the way that he explains it, that he hyperventilates in water, almost guarantees that some of the half million people who have seen this video will think that this is safe. They will imitate him and they will die. Don't just take it from me. Here's breath worker and big wave surfer, Laird Hamilton. Anybody taking Wim's work and going into a pool and hyperventilating, you're just playing roulette. You're almost guaranteed at some point to go out when you do that. The physiology behind this is a little unintuitive, but it's ultimately straightforward. People feel the urge to breathe when carbon dioxide levels rise in the lungs and bloodstream, not from declining levels of oxygen. Hyperventilating allows you to hold your breath longer because it artificially lowers CO2 levels in the body, and it takes longer for you to feel that urge to breathe. Meanwhile, you use up oxygen at the same normal rate, so it's possible to run out of oxygen and pass out without ever realizing that it's about to happen. You just don't feel those sensations coming on. On land, it's not a huge problem, but in water, it's deadly. It's a well-documented phenomenon called shallow water blackout, and you're much more likely to pass out if you take a full lung inhale because of the larger volume of air in your lungs delays the CO2 buildup even more. Fully in, and then going down. At the beginning of this year, only one reporter had ever tried counting deaths related to the Wim Hof method. That article from 2015 catalog four people. But it appeared that no one had been keeping track since then. So for the last nine months, I've been collecting news articles and tips from viewers like you to try to document how many people have actually drowned when imitating Wim Hof's example. In June, I put a video out about the situation where I knew about 13 deaths. Just a few months later, the body count has grown to 19 people. In many of those cases, the person who ended up drowning told a family member or a friend that they were gonna do Wim Hof's breath work in the water right before they died. In one case, a 24-year-old man drowned right in front of his mother. It's a difficult story for me to report because I've been practicing Wim Hof's method for almost 11 years. I've written a New York Times bestseller about ice bathing and breath work, and I truly believe that these techniques offer massive benefits to anyone suffering from autoimmune illnesses, anxiety, and depression. There's even some pretty good science to back all of it up. 
But there are two simultaneous truths about Wim Hof. The first truth is that he's a provocateur who has pushed the boundaries of science forward and inspired millions of people to take up healthy practices. He's a hard guy not to like. But the second truth is that his irresponsible messaging and a systematic cover-up of deaths and injuries by his organization, Inner Fire, is literally killing people all over the world, as some of those millions of people who imitate Wim Hof's instructions drown. The video clip I opened up this report with has been online for two years. It is merely the clearest example of Wim explicitly telling people that the secret to his success revolves around hyperventilating in water. He's given similar messages in his classic 10-week course that he sells for $100 on his website. He's hyperventilated on the BBC, on Netflix's Goop Lab with Gwyneth Paltrow, and on podcasts and videos and social media posts all over the internet. If you want an exhaustive accounting of these clips, check out my playlist, Outer Fire, to see how common this really is. Since my work on this started appearing, the Wim Hof community has predictably split into two camps. One camp understands that I'm not trying to destroy Wim Hof or his method when I bring up these issues with inner fire. I'm trying to make these practices safer for everyone so that we can all benefit from the real effects. The other camp believes that saying anything negative about Wim Hof is tantamount to heresy. Let's call these people the who are you gonna believe, your own lying eyes or Wim Hof camp. They're the flat earthers of the Wim Hof movement. They've called me Judas. They've threatened to kill me. They've patently ignored facts and pretended that Wim Hof would never teach hyperventilation in water. And in at least one case, one Wim Hof Method instructor put out a two hour long YouTube video that went over my work frame by frame to supposedly prove that Wim never hyperventilates and that I am 100% wrong about everything I've ever done. Uh, they correctly note that Inner Fire does post warnings on their videos and their website about hyperventilating in water, but they don't acknowledge that what Wim does in his videos is specifically hyperventilation. Somehow these critics think that the positive work that I've done about Wim Hof over the years all checks out. It's just when I said something that was maybe a little critical about him that set them off. Inner Fire has done its utmost to push forward this narrative in order to ignore the facts. When they say that I have a vendetta against Wim Hof, their followers think that this somehow absolves Wim's own mountain of lies and the mounting body count. They say that I'm getting paid by Big Pharma to undermine Wim's good works. These people blame the victims, calling them idiots for doing something so obviously dangerous as hyperventilating in water, which Wim would never teach them. They even threaten the families who try to speak out. The families that I talk to are so scared to go public that they often remind me what happened to the families of the survivors of the Newtown school shootings who were harassed for decades by people who would rather invent conspiracy theories than believe the truth, the documented facts. Luckily, the tide is beginning to change. Last week, an article in the Dutch newspaper De Volkskrant, which I guess you could call Holland's equivalent of the New York Times, conducted its own completely independent investigation. The reporter, Annika Stoffelen, found a similar pattern of lies and abuse by Inner Fire that I documented. I've posted the article below in Dutch and have an English translation of the article for free on my Patreon so that you can read it yourself. I think her most important revelations were from people who have approached inner fire over the years after they sustained injuries or had family members die. The people were just trying to inform inner fire about the dangerous and confusing message about how Wim publicly combines breathwork and waterwork. 
Instead of taking any sort of action to correct the problem, Inner Fire threatened to sue the informers for defamation in order to keep them quiet. There is no telling how many deaths and injuries Inner Fire knows about and has intentionally hidden from the public eye. They have a history of trying to misdirect the press to preserve their public image. From Anum, orders do not talk to the press. What did Inner Fire know? And when did they know it? Answering those questions will determine if Wim's bad messaging is just a mistake or an active cover-up. The 19 cases that I found were mostly in America, but Hoff's reach is global. My sample is undoubtedly skewed since I actually have to document a connection between Hoff and the people who died. Many more people could have drowned and never told anyone what they were doing. Could there be dozens of more deaths? Hundreds? There's already a court case underway that might be able to get to the bottom of this question through the process of evidence discovery. To find out more about what's happening there, including the bizarre lies that Wim Hof told the court and possible repercussions for perjury, check out this video that I just did. I've covered this tragic story exhaustively on this channel. I'm doing it because I want to save the good parts of the method from the corrupt actions of inner fire and what we could say is willful ignorance of Wim Hof to the consequences of his own words. More innocent people shouldn't have to die to get this message across. I know from reading the comments on my videos that spreading this message is in fact saving lives. For every 10 or 20 nasty comments from that flat earth crew, I get one note from someone who was already hyperventilating in water because of what they saw Wim Hof do online. The warnings that Inner Fire posts on their videos to avert liability are not enough to fix the situation. We need to come together to separate the myth of Wim Hof from the reality. Please like and share this video widely with anyone who you think needs to see it.